In this lesson, I am going to talk about a subspace. What is a subspace? A subset of a vector space is called a subspace if the subset is itself a vector space under the addition and scalar multiplication defined on V. For instance, W here is a subset of V. This means that W is contained inside of V. Here are the properties that must be satisfied by W for it to become a subspace of V. Take note that some of these properties are inherited by W from V. For example, commutativity. This U and V here are in W but they are also in V. And in V, we know that addition is commutative. Correct? What are the other properties that are inherited also? This one. What else? This, 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 and this. All of this will be true because it is already true in V. These are the properties that will not be inherited from V. Let us take a look at each of these. This is the closure property, right? Earlier, we just know that V, since V is a vector space, then we know that if we get U and V inside the vector space V, then the sum would be in V and scalar multiple will also be in V. However, what we want to happen is that if this is your W and if we get arbitrary elements in W, take note in this case U and V are already in W, if we add this to, the sum should still be inside W. Alright? We know that the U plus V should be contained in V, but we want it to be special. We want it to be inside the set W. And similarly, we want any scalar product, if we get V in W, the scalar multiple of that vector should also be contained in W. What else? Take note that since V is a vector space, we just know that there is a zero vector in V. Correct? But this one is saying that this element 0 must not only be inside of V, but it must also be contained in W. This 0 over here should be inside of W for W to be a subspace of V. What else? Also, if we get an arbitrary element of V in W, the additive inverse should be contained inside W. So therefore, for a subset of a vector space to be a subspace, we only need to verify these four properties. However, it turns out that we do not need to verify this two. We only need to verify the closure property. And that gives us the following theorem, the subspace test theorem. If W is a set of one or more vectors in a vector space V, then W is a subspace of V if and only if the following conditions are satisfied. It's just saying that first, it must be closed under vector addition, and it must also be closed under scalar multiplication. When we say that W is closed under vector addition, when we get two vectors in W, the sum should also be in W. When we get a vector in W, the scalar multiple should be in W. Let me just prove that these two conditions are necessary to show that W is already a subspace. From our previous discussion, I just want to show that the two other properties will be satisfied. First is that the zero vector will be inside W and if we get an arbitrary element in W, then the additive inverse must also exist in W. Let me prove this. In order to show that the zero vector is actually in W, let us get W in W. By this property, by 2, if we get a scalar multiple of W, then that scalar multiple will be in W. Then we get k to be equal to 0, then 0 times w would be equal, would be an element of the set w. 
because of this property two. Let me call this property two. However, what is zero? This is the zero real number times any vector. This would be equal to your zero vector. So that proves that the zero vector is actually in your subspace W. Next, I will show that for any vector in W, its additive inverse is actually in W. To do this, again, I will be using property 2. In order to do this, I will take this vector W and I will multiply it by negative 1. By 2 over here, The scalar multiple of W would again be inside W. But let us recall from our previous discussions that negative 1 times W is equal to negative W. Hence, we were able to show that the two other conditions will be satisfied. Let us discuss some examples of subspaces. First, let me define the following. A matrix A is said to be symmetric whenever its transpose is equal to itself. And then I will get the set of all symmetric matrices. Let me add this a uh, set of all n by n symmetric matrices. And we will show that W is a subspace of Mn. When I say Mn here, for brevity, Mn is actually Mnn, the set of all n by n matrices. Let us show that this is a subspace of Mn with the standard operations of matrix addition and scalar multiplication. According to our subspace test theorem, we only have to show two things. First, we need to show that it is closed under addition. And the second one is that it is closed under scalar multiplication. To show that it is closed under matrix addition, that is our vector addition in this case, let me get two elements in W. And I want to show that their sum is still inside W. What is the meaning of A and B being inside W? That means that A and B are asymmetric because here W is the set of all symmetric matrices. This means that A transpose is equal to A and B transpose is equal to B. To show that A plus B is also in W, we want to show that a plus B is also a symmetric matrix. To show that it is a symmetric matrix, we just have to compute for the transpose of A plus B and show that it is equal to itself. What is A plus B transpose? This is equal to the transpose of A plus the transpose of B. From here, A transpose is equal to A and B transpose is equal to B. So therefore, we have this the transpose of A plus B is itself. So therefore, A plus B is symmetric and hence it is an element of W. Next, we will show that it is closed under scalar multiplication. How do we do that? We will take an arbitrary scalar and we get an arbitrary element of your W. What is our goal? We want to show that K times A would also be in W. In other words, we want to show that K times A is symmetric or that the transpose of KA is itself. Okay, let's proceed. Let us now compute K times A transpose. From our previous discussions, how do you get the transpose? of a scalar multiple of a matrix, you simply copy the constant and then get the transpose of your matrix. But what is A transpose? Since A is in W, this means that it is symmetric. So A transpose is the same as A. The transpose of K times A is equal to itself. So therefore, K times A is again in W. With the subspace test theorem, W is indeed a subspace of Mn. Let us consider another example. Let W be the set of all invertible n by n matrices. Is this a subspace of Mn under the usual 
matrix addition and scalar multiplication. So first, let us check for closure of addition. What we want to check is that if I am given two matrices in W, is it true that A plus B is again in W? What do you think, class? The answer here is no. We can give a counter example. For example, we can take A to be just this matrix, 1, 1, the identity, and B is negative 1, negative 1. That's the negative of the identity here. So therefore, A plus B here is equal to the 0 matrix. Recall that how do we know if a matrix is invertible? It would be invertible if the determinant is not equal to 0. The determinant of A is equal to 1 and the determinant of B is also equal to 1. So therefore, A and B are invertible. So hence, they are in W. But this sum A plus B, this is definitely not in W because this one has determinant zero so it is not closed under addition so therefore this is not a subspace of mn what about this one let w be the set of singular matrices of order two order two just means that it is of size two by two is this a subspace of m22 in the previous slide We've shown that the set of non-singular matrices will not be a subspace. So that's why we're considering this one. What if we collect all the set of singular matrices? We have to check if it is closed under addition, meaning to say if I get A, B, in W, is A plus B in W. What's this saying? If we get two singular matrices, because our W is a set of singular matrices, when we add them together, do we always get a singular matrix? No. For example, I take my A to be this one, 1, 0, 0, and B is this one. Note that A and B, the determinants of A and B, are both equal to 0 because that's just the product of the diagonal entries, correct? If you have a diagonal matrix, the determinant is just a product of the mean diagonal entries. So therefore, A and B are indeed in W. They are both singular. However, what is A plus B? A plus B is your identity matrix, the 2 by 2 identity matrix. And of course, the determinant of the identity matrix is equal to 1. And therefore, A plus B is non-singular and hence it is not in w so the answer here is no as well next let us consider this space we're collecting all ordered pairs in the first quadrant because we have x greater than or equal to zero y greater than or equal to zero it is this space over here and so on is this one a subspace of R2? What do you think? The answer here is no again. Why? Because it will fail the closure property under scalar multiplication. To show that this is not a subspace, we only need to give a counter example. We can get, let's say, W11. 1, 1. 1, 1 is an element of W. When I multiply it with negative 1, this is not in W because this is negative 1, 1. And the elements of W are those points in the first quadrant only. This is already in the third quadrant, correct? So again, the answer here is no. What about this one? The set consisting of all points on the unit circle. Is this a subspace of R2? Again, the answer here is no. Why? It is not closed under scalar multiplication. Why is that? For example, our 1, 0, right? It is an element of W. Points on the unit circle. 
I am referring to this point. But of course, when I multiply it, let's say with 3, this is equal to 3, 0. And of course, that is not a point on your unit circle. So the answer here is no as well. Consider this. Which of the subsets below is a subspace of R3? Let us consider the first one. It is an ordered triple because we are in R3, of course, we're in. The last coordinate is always equal to 1. Is it closed under vector addition? What is our vector addition here again? That's just the usual addition of three tuples. The answer here is no again because if I get, let's say, x1, x2, 1, I add it with another element here. Let's call it y1, y2, 1. When I add them, I get x1 plus y1, x2 plus y2. But the third coordinate will no longer be equal to 1. It will be equal to 2 instead. So this is not in W. These two are in W, but their sum is not in W. Hence, the answer is no. Moreover, of course, it is also not closed under scalar multiplication. If you multiply it with, let's say, any number which is not equal to 1, let's say 2. If I multiply, this is equal to 2x1, 2x2, 2. And again, this is not in W. This is in W. When I got scalar multiple of it, I obtained an answer which is not in number. So indeed, this is really no. Next, let's have this. This is a set of ordered triple wherein the second coordinate is given by the sum of the first and the third coordinate. Let's get two arbitrary elements in W. Here, x2 is equal to x1 plus x3 and y2 is equal to y1 plus y3. When we add this, let's call this u and b. When I add my u and b, this is equal to x1 plus y1, x2 plus y2, x3 plus y3. And what must be satisfied for u plus b to be inside w? We want your x2 plus y2 to be equal to the sum of the first and third coordinates x1 plus y1 plus x3 plus y3 and that is exactly the case because x2 is x1 plus x3 and y2 is y1 plus y3 so indeed they are equal so hence this is closed under vector addition Next, I will check if it is close under scalar multiplication. I already have my arbitrary u here. I will get an arbitrary real number. Is it true that ku is in w? This is our question. Let us compute ku. This would be k, x1, x2, x3 which is equal to kx1, kx2, kx3. And for this one to be in W, we want kx2 to be equal to the sum of the first and third coordinate, kx1 plus kx3. Is this true? Yes, because x2 here is x1 plus x3 times k and therefore they are really equal so therefore the answer here is yes now just to remark whenever you want to show that something is not a subspace all you need to do is to find an example you just have to give a counter example however if you want to show that it is a subspace you need to show that it is closed under vector addition and under 
scalar multiplication. But to show that it is close under vector addition, you have to start with arbitrary. Remember that. You're always starting with let u, v be element of w. You're starting with two arbitrary elements in your set and show that the sum would be in w. And then to show that it is close under multiplication, you're starting with an arbitrary element in W and an arbitrary element of the set of real numbers and show that that one is in W. Understand? You cannot give examples to show that it is a subspace. You have to show that it is true for anything. All right? So that's the end of our lesson in subspaces.